I'm so nervous. This is what I've resorted to, guys. This is this is what these movies are resorting me to do because I can't stay still and focus on them. But now I have a morphin worm. If you guys saw the last video and thought day 10 of a period was crazy, day 10! Guys, we've made it to day 17. Will we ever be free from the shackles of menstruation? I don't know. At this point, I don't know. Today's video is sponsored by Parade. As a girly myself, I have gone through countless stages and periods of my life trying to find the right underwear and bras that suit all my needs. I've found so many wonderful products from Parade. Not only are their underwear some of my favorite underwears to ever wear, I love their seamless lines because they actually are seamless and don't bunch up whenever I wear them. One of the biggest problems I have with seamless underwear, something that has a seamless line, is that they end up getting bunched up under my pants and I don't particularly like that. With Parade Seamless Line, they're able to stay flat and stay hidden as they're supposed to. And I can't talk about their underwear without talking about their bras. These are their balconette bras. These are some of my favorite bras from Parade. They are opaque. These are not the see-through balconette bras. These ones do have an opaque lining right here, so it's not see-through. These are the best. I'm personally a smaller chested woman and Bras with a lot of cupping is very uncomfortable for me, so I like something like this that's a little bit more breathable but still has a little bit of support from that underwire. And their balconette bras are my favorite. And Parade doesn't just stop at underwear and bras. They have loungewear, they have corsets, they have stuff that you can wear out at night, they have pajamas, they have literally everything that you could possibly need, and they are one of my favorite companies ever, not only to work with, but to wear. I constantly am recommending Parade to my friends and families because I think that they're a really quality brand and company and I wear them constantly. It's one of the things that goes through my cycle of clothing every single week, no matter what, without a change. I love all of their fabrics from their Lush Rib to their Glow Luxe Satin line from their Soft Lace. I love all their fabrics. They're super high quality. They do not rip apart when you throw them into a hot washing machine. I know that for sure. And they just fit my body the way I would like underwear to fit me, meaning my parts stay in the fabric. That's number one for me. So if you guys wanna look cute and comfortable and save some money while doing it, you guys can use my code TRIN50 to get 50% off your order today, or you guys can click the link at the top of my description box, yourparade.com slash TRIN50. Thank you, Parade, for sponsoring today's video. Does anyone care about this movie anymore? I'm not sure. Everybody knows the drama circulating. It ends with us and its release and its news cycle that it ran. Boy, did it run. And I want to clarify before I watch the movie that I don't particularly like any of the parties involved within the drama. The parties involved being Justin Baldoni, Blake Lively, and Colleen Hoover. None of those people are people that I think of in my daily life. I don't subscribe to any of the notions of Justin Baldoni is great, or Blake Lively is great, or Colleen Hoover is great. Colleen Hoover actually came out of this unscathed. Like she, I think we need to like get her again because I feel like out of all parties involved, she got hated on the least within this press run. And I feel like we need to hate her a little bit more. If you thought that I was gonna read any book, it wasn't gonna be this one. No matter how many times a white woman came up to me telling me I had to read this book. They were not gonna get me. I bought the book. I bought the book because everyone was recommending it. And I did not open the first page. And one more thing I wanna address before we get into watching the movie is that, first of all, this movie depicts domestic violence. And if that is something that you cannot handle, that is something that is triggering to you, we can watch the next movie together. That is completely fine. You will not hurt my feelings. You do not have to watch this. But this movie depicts that, so this video will contain discussions of that as well. As we know on my channel, my commentaries are comedic commentaries, and a lot of them I'm making jokes at them. But I want to state very clearly at the beginning of this video that in no way, shape, or form is my intention to make fun of stories depicting domestic violence or 
making fun of domestic violence. That's never my intention and that would be never something that I would intentionally do. Any jokes that will be made are only at the quality of the movie, the script writing, and the production and like technical aspects of the movie, not the contents within it. I never want you guys to think that I would make fun of something as serious as that. And if you thought I was grumpy on day 10 of my period, day 17, I can't even put it into words. So just, Good luck to everyone involved. It's like I'm already in such a bad mood. Like I can't even like pretend to be in a good mood while filming this video. And it's not because I don't like filming. It's not because I am mad at you guys. I would never be mad at you guys. I love you guys so much. And I'm so happy that I'm able to talk to you guys when I'm in such grumpy moods. It's just like, I don't have any hope that this movie is gonna make me feel better. Like it could only make me feel worse in a state like this. It's just a movie. What could, what could go wrong? I love that shot. It's beautiful. They're starting off with compliments. I'm trying to be nice. What year does this take place in? <laughs> You're funny. I don't know what we're gonna do. What are we gonna do? <laughs> this isn't the right thing to say and I know it's insensitive because it's obviously a funeral, but just imagine if she was like, it's good to see you, mom. And plot twist, we're back in Age of Adeline. It's the same plot, but a different point in Adeline's life where she went by a different name. I'll be gagged, I would actually be so gagged. In honor of my father's life, I would um, like to share with you the, the five things that I love most about him. Why did we even bring it up on the stage? Why did we bring the bullet point napkin up to the stage if there was nothing written on it? You're just pulling my leg at this point. <laughs> um, who are you? I'm Pam. Who are you? I'm the owner of this house. Despite both of their controversies, they are two very conventionally attractive people. And I'll give them that. I'll let them have that. That's the, that's the most I'll do. Okay. So what floor you live on? You first. Absolutely not. I'm not telling some random man what fucking floor I live on. What do you do for a living? Neurosurgeon. <laughs> Is that funny? He's a neurosurgeon? And he kind of looks like Derek Shepard. I know your games. I know your games, I know what you're trying to do. Excuse me, broke into my building? I have a really nice view. I do. Is this the rooftop scene that everyone was talking about that Ryan Reynolds like rewrote for the movie? I don't think so. This is not as impactful as I think that they made it out to be. You just shock me, say, I mean, you can say anything. I wanna have sex with you. Um, excuse me? <laughs> what? to shock you. I mean, that's only fine if an attractive person says it to you. And even then I don't even think it's okay. Cause if I, if so, I just met someone and they said that, I would run away. I ain't have to break your record. I'm the kind of girl you take home to mama. How far would you go? That's like a bit much. Like she already said no. I'm not sure I'm an unreliable narrator. Who talks about themselves like that? Who talks about themselves like that? That's so weird. I'm an unreliable narrator. Okay, that was kind of attractive. Okay. Okay, you got me, sue me. I think that's kind of attractive. I don't like how dark this scene is and I know it's taking place at night, but I'm not a fan of scenes lit like this. Like I find it to be, like this is when a superhero unmasks his identity to like his lover, not really this type of scene. Like I wish there was some more saturated lighting, maybe something a little bit more warmer to indicate some sort of inviting energy this seems very cold which might be the point because he turns out to be a bad person later but visually speaking this looks really unsaturated and quite bad oh this is a different person good casting i didn't even realize they were different people that was good that was a good one i love a good casting choice dear ellen 
Was she trying to get on Ellen? He found a perfectly cut sandwich in the trash. No bites taken out of it, perfectly wrapped in foil. He's a dumpster diver, but he found the, the perfectly clean, half-eaten sandwich. Okay. He is so Caleb from Pretty Little Liars, actually. And she's Hannah. He's living in the school. I'm actually dead. Your software slays, by the way. I know this is a very sweet scene that she's doing. I absolutely despise the coloring. And I don't know if this is the coloring for the flashbacks to accentuate that it is a flashback, but it is, if this is the coloring throughout the entire movie, I'm going to be really upset because I hate coloring like this. I just like, oh, it just like literally makes me so upset. Like why is it so unsaturated? Oh my God, it was Ellen. She is writing to Ellen. Why is she writing to Ellen? What is she trying to get on the Ellen show for? Is she trying to get tickets to see Ellen? Or is she trying to showcase a talent on Ellen? Talk to you later, bye. Hi, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, uh, okay, I just moved sweetheart. here. Good luck. How old is she supposed to be, really? Because I heard, I heard, I saw stuff that saying that she was supposed to be 22 in this movie. If that's true, that's crazy. I'm 22. And I am not trying to compare myself to Blake Lively in any scenario, because I don't think I would really win but I do think she looks older than me. I can think I can confidently say that and that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. Aging is beautiful. 22 is a bit of a reach, guys. You're giving Ben Platt and Dear Evan Hansen and it's an epidemic. We need to stop it, guys. We need to stop. Oh my God, babe, you are stunning. Can you bring my brother in too? Right. I can't take responsibility for either of the people who are about to come in here, just so you know. Oh my God, it's gonna be him. Looks like we will be seeing a little more of each other then. Is that so? So it's not just a nighttime thing. The coloring is gonna look like this throughout the entire movie. Mm-hmm. That's so upsetting. It actually looks so bad. I thought we agreed to make fun of this. Did. That was like hours ago. <laughs> He's a lot. He's very forward. It's very off-putting. It's very unattractive. Any attraction that he had, it's very much wearing off because of this attitude. Can I just kiss you? Oh. It's like you're in a onesie and you're asking for a kiss. How fucking dare you? Did that get me out of your system? They kissed. In the middle of the street, by the way. Awesome. I heard what happened last night. With your dad and your mom. I don't, okay, yeah. It's gonna happen a lot. I like this young storyline. I like this like flashback. I think it's fleshed out and I think it actually looks like it has some foundation to it. Them finding connection because they have a similar life and um, similar parents. And I think that is very interesting, much more than the present storyline we're following. <laughs> What is she, what guys? Watch out, watch out. But the the outfit, watch out for the outfit, because what is going on? I haven't even seen the front. I've only seen the boots. <laughs> the boots and the jacket. I think we need I think we need to let go of her jackets. I think like let her have her arms out. Why the like military grade jackets? industrial jackets she has on. Like she doesn't need to be wearing those all the time. We can do rustic, it's okay. I believe in rustic fashion choices. There's a way to do rustic fashion choices in many different ways. And a sparkly, sparkly boot with whatever the rest of the outfit is that I haven't even seen by the way. I've only seen the boot and the back of her shirt. That's already enough for me to have a tantrum about it. He's in a black suit. They're in sparkly gowns. That was the author. Fuck you. Take off the jacket. I thought we were friends. We are friends. Oh. Their scenes are bothering me. I hate that. I hate that that's like the third scene that we've gotten of them being like, I thought we were friends. You know we're not. Okay. Like it's so boring. And they're gonna do it again. Great. You wanna go somewhere more private? She just got there. Okay. I'm over it. And it's not even like this is like offensive or anything. Like there's nothing inherently wrong with it. First of all, it's quite boring. Second of all, 
No, that's the only reason I need to not like something. You okay? What are you doing? Getting ready for bed. The fact that her, they're her best friend and his sister's birthday party literally just started. They left and they're like, we're going to sleep. I don't find this cheeky. I don't find it funny. I don't find it fun. To be honest, I just find it quite annoying. The rhinestones are killing me. Like the noises of them and them being like, oh, it's so sexy. You got it. It's like pissing me off and I don't have any reason, but like they're the way that they have their interactions just like piss me off. And he just put on pajama pants over her fishnet tights and she's gonna sleep in them. Awesome. I, yeah, I'm so comfy. Fishnets, imprints on my fucking legs. This is not the person and it's not about you and I love you, yeah. but let me just say. Date me. What? Date me. So, so far, I'm going to be honest, not much has happened. Within 46 minutes, what has been established so far? Her dad passed away. Her dad was abusive to her mother. In high school, she befriended a homeless kid by the name of Atlas. She opened up the flower shop with a stranger. The stranger happened to have a brother that happened to be someone that we talked to earlier on. Like the only thing that's been established between the two characters romantically has been that he's really pushy and she's really wishy-washy. And 45 minutes is a long time to establish that. That's kind of a long time. Try. Why are you using this song? What? Pause, what is her? Pardon my French, but like, but who lug ass? Shoo, what was that? What is that? He is wearing Nikes and she is wearing that. With pants, by the way, with pants that like scrunch at the heel. Jump up, joggers, if you will, joggers. Is that what we're gonna have to deal with for another hour and a half? This movie is so long, by the way. I'm 46 minutes in, it's two hours and 10 minutes. Are you fucking kidding me? What possibly could happen? It's always her with those fuck ass jackets. It's like, take the jacket off first. We could have had this happen so much earlier on. We did not need to wait 46 minutes to have this montage. And why, I'm sorry, but why make it such a big deal of them being like, the first time they met, I'm not having sex. And the second time at the party, I'm not having sex. For the only thing to change for her to finally give in is for him to be like, I want to date. I want to date you. And then she's like, okay. Like for me, the back and forth really isn't necessary because nothing really changed between him when they were going back and forth and her being like, no, but yes, but no, but yes. And now when they're going on dates, like they had the same scene when they were at the bowling alley, having so much fun, having so much connection, they kissed. And then they were like, no. And then she was being wishy-washy and then nothing really changed between then and now. And I feel like it's kind of like, you could have had them do this after the bowling alley, after they had like reconnected after not seeing each other for like a month after they first met. You didn't need all that in between because quite frankly, nothing in their characters was really shown that changed. So you could have just done it earlier on. This is the this is the definition of when you take book to movie adaptation too strong because when the movie is this long, you know they were like, "We have to include this because the book fans really like this." It's like, I don't give a fuck about what the book fans think. It, it's useless in the in in the terms of like actually like watching a story unfold. It's useless. You have point A, point B, point C, you could have cut point B completely. Cuz nothing changes. I happen to love you too. Oh, he said he loved her. Bo bogus, pause, bogus. First of all, he's in the penthouse, crazy. But no, he's on a neurosurgeon salary, so of course. Also, I love this. I love like making points with my, my, my morph worm. I hate it when we get a scene like that, that's so monumental. And I know I'm picking it apart and like, 
honestly, if you caught me on a different day, what I say on this? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I can't say that I'm being super fair to this movie. I really can't. But I think this is a valid criticism. I don't like it when all of a sudden the two main characters, I love you, I love you too. But like, why? But maybe that's the point, okay? Okay. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, that's my, that's the pointing myself into a corner because I think, okay, let me try to contextualize this movie. Maybe it's a point that the relationship moves fast. Maybe it's a point to, for us to be like, whoa, that's kind of really fast for them to say I love you. Maybe. Um, I made cookies. Yep. <gasps> yeah. I'm starting oh. to. Owen Hunt. Oh, and no, he's been typecasted. It needs to stop because he actually seems very likable in real life. Like when he was doing interviews for Brave, he seemed very chill and very fun. He was also the dad in Percy Jackson. He was Poseidon. Oh, oh, oh surprise me. He's like, you're a fucking bitch. You don't remember me. I hate you. I've been wanting to do that all day. Uh, Lana, what's happening? Why this song? You know. I'm gonna be a dad. Why this song for this scene? Oh my God, a pregnancy announcement? Like it is sultry Lana Del Rey song during this pregnancy announcement. Yeah. <laughs> Why would he grab it with his bare hand? Are you fucking stupid? Oh, shit. Oh my God, his surgeon hands. Shit. How did we make a mess? We? I'm so sorry. Who the fuck is we? What is we? Cause if I watch the situation correctly, he put his hand on the hot pan and then flipped out when he burned himself and pushed her. What does that mean, we? Thank you, appreciate it. It's actually my mother's recipe. Oh, it's really beautiful. Oh my, it's my first recipe. Oh, it's his restaurant? Oh my God, me and Blake are such a bitch because I literally thought he was a waiter. Come on, tell me, what happened? Nothing, I, we, I, we burned his hand and I fell. I know, I know, it's, it was an accident though, it was. That was an accident? Yes. Bang, clocked it, he clocked it so quick. Stop. Oh, no. What is this? Pause. Both of these people are crazy. We need to get her away from both. Atlas, I liked you when you were younger. I did, but this is a bit of an overreaction for someone that you don't really know anymore, right? Right, we don't know each other anymore. It's been a long time. It's been a long time we don't know each other anymore. So, yeah. Even though he's right. Like, technically he is right. You're crossing a line, buddy. You're crossing a line. But I do like it that he's standing up for her. That's very sweet. I'm such, I'm literally the definition of like, cannot pick a side. I'm li I'm all over the place today, guys. One second I love it, the next second I hate it. Only thing that stays constant is this. My morph worm. Who's in there? <laughs> hey, open. Oh my God, Owen, stop. Owen! Owen! That is a child. Owen. Oh, uh, it's like, I can't defend you from all this because it's like, how come you're this person in every single role? What? Owen. Oh, that's fucked up. Unless she wants to. Then I, I would marry her tonight. It seems very fast, but technically this is like over the course of like, this is over like a year. He's going around. Oh my I mean, god. Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, I would kill someone. If you take my fucking baby's birthday, my baby's birthday, and you make it your proposal anniversary, I'm killing you on spot. Yeah, fuck no. I just pushed out a baby through my fucking vagina, and you're taking the opportunity to make it about you? 
and propose to someone, oh, I'm killing you. It's on site. I'm actually not. I'm actually like being so for real. I would, there would be nothing more that pissed me off than I, I'm sitting in the bed, literally like vagina trying to like retract, trying to like heal itself. And if, now you want to make it about you and your, your wedding. Ooh, I would be so upset. That would not be a joyous moment. I would kill them. No proposals in my baby room. No proposals. Fuck you. Hey, what happened? Are you okay? Why is the lamp broken? I called the number. Why would you call the number? It's nothing. Okay. It's all done. Shh, I'm here. Stop. I'm here. The fact Oh, you didn't take me to the hospital? That was very scary though. When he like throws the phone or whatever he threw with it first off, and when they're in the room, that was actually very scary. Like, I don't know why, but I wasn't expecting it. And it like kind of freaked me out. Small hollow heart from an oak tree for a girl. So the name was meant to represent something she said to me, which I'm going to keep between us. But there was no other name for Root. It was always for her, baby. Like, sorry I had a life before you. Like, shoot me, kill me. Like, sorry I lived a life and I had people that loved me before you. I'm a very lovable person. He's really fucking scary. Oh, 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 you back up a bit. Back up, back up. Okay. I'm not gonna show it. I don't feel comfortable showing that on my channel. There's a very intense scene between the two characters and by intense, I mean abusive scene between Ryle and Lily. Um, it depicts him forcing himself on her. Nothing ends up happening, but it triggers Lily's PTSD for her father, doing it to her mother. He's holding her hostage. He's pinning her down. I don't want to show it, but I think it's important that I include it in this video, that it is a scene that takes place within this movie. Um, it's an important part of the story. It's where Lily's flashing back and, uh, you know, going over the courses of their relationship, looking at all the red flags, basically, and things that are abuse. And she's kind of taking it in and having a full realization moment. But I wanted to take a pause right here to share that I did watch it. I did feel very uncomfortable by it. I think it was done as well as it could be. I do find it weird that this movie doesn't come with a trigger warning. The beginning half of this movie doesn't really imply that that's a scene that will be shown. This is kind of almost like a twist of some sort that he is fully aware of the abuse that he's doing to her. Conclusion, I did watch the scene I don't have much to say about it other than that. And now I will continue on the movie. Oh my God, she went to Atlas. That is so good. Like the unspoken of it all is really good. I think that's actually really good. I love that scene. I think that's a really good scene. And I think that's what I've been wanting from the film this entire time is almost like less is more. I've been wanting less from the scenes where they've been giving more, almost too much. And I really like that scene, the simplicity of it all. I, I don't understand. We don't give x-rays to pregnant women unless it's vital. Of course, I should have fucking known it's a Colleen Hoover story and they're in a fucking, they're in a fucking hospital. Of course she found out she's pregnant. Of course. So. I'm stupid. I'm a stupid little girl and I know nothing. If you find yourself in a position to love somebody, you can't just fall in love with me. 
that's very cute if you find yourself in the position to fall in love again just fall in love with me i love their scenes together i think they have really good scenes together and really good chemistry this song but i think there's another song that fits it better may i say cardigan perhaps No, no, it happened three times. No, 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 no. I'm going to reserve my opinions for like at the end because I don't know how this is going to end between them. So I don't want to say anything before we know what ends up happening. I want a divorce. Hey, let's not. Hey, yes. And she said her husband held her down and she begged him to stop. But he swore he'd never do it again. I would beg her to leave him. I think that's like a great like F you moment to him. But I also hate it that men don't really realize and sometimes don't even realize after they have children that the context of it happening to your daughter is what makes it worse and what makes it morally wrong for you. That Oh, you're like, oh yeah, that is bad because I have a daughter. And that's why I hate the rhetoric of what if it happened to your daughter, mother, sister so much because I don't think you have to have siblings, a mother or a daughter to be able to sympathize with women being mistreated. I don't think that should be a thing. Stops right here, Bubba, with you and me. It ends with us. two times they said it twice but he's still gonna be her dad so they're gonna have joint custody because i don't think i would even want joint custody i would be like fuck you you're not you're no this baby is mine and i'm leaving are, are I was you the sword. with anyone no i'm going not even a kiss i don't think this is a bad movie i always ask myself after i watch a movie would i watch it again no I wouldn't watch this again. For the same criticisms that I've held throughout the entire video. One, it's a very heavy exposition type movie. Everything is filled with exposition, 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 explaining, explaining, explaining. And I get it. It just seems like a lot. It feels like I'm being like babysat through a movie. Dialogue within film is super powerful. And I think that if you only use dialogue in a way that is ex explicitly explaining everything that happens, you're misusing dialogue. I think what my favorite scene from this movie is when Lily goes to Atlas and he already knows what she has been through before she even says it. I really like that. I wish the movie had more of that. That what lacked for me from this movie was almost like an artistic style. I think that it felt so blockbuster to me and that not that might not be a criticism for other people. That might be fine. But for me, it was like the soundtrack and the way things were shot and the color grading and the directions of the scenes and the way things were being, you know, set up just felt so blockbuster and like I think that this movie would have sufficed way better with someone else directing. I think Justin Baldoni and Blake Lively did a great job acting. I don't think there's anything wrong with the way they acted. I think they were fine. Do I think they probably could have been better people to play them? A thousand percent. But what I think is the real problem is the directing. I think that it feels so blockbuster when in my imagination and what I would have pictured a story like this to be shown. This makes, this will probably make no sense to so many people and this might not be the correlation that everyone was thinking. In my vision of what this movie could have really succeeded and really um, thrived in would be a film like The Florida Project. I think The Florida Project is a really good movie on 
things not being stated clearly, but still telling a story and showcasing a serious topic. Quite frankly, I don't think I'm even the right person to declare whether it's great representation or not great representation of domestic violence. I've never suffered domestic violence to such a degree that I can be a person to declare that really. It's up to people who have actually endured that and survived it. Um, but as a movie in its in entirety, it's bland, it's all right. I don't think there's anything that wrong with it. I mean, the first half was kind of unbearable, but that's okay. So leave your comments down below, I'd love to know. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe so you see more videos from me, hopefully when I am off my period and not as angry. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching.